This is what the astronomers are warning us of concerning inbound asteroids. Scientists fear that NASA will not be able to spot a rogue earthbound rock, Kalamhor Express UK reports. Well, they've already told us that they can't really see everything until they're too close to Earth. 20 hours, 48 hours, most of them are spotted when they're that close and really can't be dealt with. Let's remember they're going at about anywhere between 20 thousand and forty thousand or fifty thousand miles per hour. NASA is unable to spot every single rock in space including rogue asteroids that could threaten life on Earth. This is what a scientist warned about in his book last year. Asteroids that are small rocky bodies in the inner solar system orbiting our Sun, there's millions of them flying around in space and their collisions which are uh, our asteroid impacts or on the Moon or Mars, have played significant roles in shaping many planets. NASA is constantly watching the cosmos to categorize any near-Earth objects, NEOs, if they're potentially hazardous objects, PHOs, if they're, they could pose a threat to life on Earth. Okay, let's say they find them. What are they going to do about them? That's another th issue. They can't do much about them. Dr. Natalie Starkey warned during her 2018 book, Chasing Stardust, that a surprise rock could catch the space agency off guard. This is what she wrote in her book last year. We have to remember that we are not totally safe, as there are always those rogue objects out there that could sneak up on us. Well, one of them stuck up on us. It was an inter interstellar comet, Umuamua, in 2017. We just had another one the beginning of August coming towards us and that's another interstellar object that was seen by an amateur astronomer of all people, not a space agency. But the space agencies did confirm it. It was close to the sun, towards the horizon. The space agency says they couldn't see it because their telescopes can't dip down that far to see what's going on around the horizon. But uh, after this second interstellar comet has been spotted. Astronomers have come to announce that, yes, they believe that we, have, we will be having more interstellar objects coming in towards us because there seems to be a brown dwarf star and its system at the edge of our solar system and its spirals are spewing out debris, which are comet-sized stuff coming at, in at us. So it's not only our solar system asteroids that we have to worry about, it's also the astronomers who've confirmed that we have interstellar stuff coming in at us as well. Now, uh, she says that we cannot study every single object in space. There's just too many of them. But the more we find out about the ones we can see and approach with a spacecraft, the better prepared we'll be to deal with the others, even those we've not seen up close before. As she goes to say, we can even be well-placed to, to deal with objects that give us very little warning of their arrival on our planet. As she says, over the next few decades we have the opportunity to build up a detailed knowledge of space objects in our neighborhood and even ones that are still very far from us. We can view them remotely with the ground and space-based telescopes that we have and they, the chance to visit to come, uh, ch uh, the chance to visit some of them with a spacecraft building all these findings proving the finer details of their composition and structure. Natalie Starkey went on to give warnings over NASA's current limitations. She says, in the future, as technological developments are made, ground-based observations might as well uh, might uh, be all we need to learn everything we need about an object in space, even when it's a great distance away. Current telescope technology cannot spot everything and we need the ability to cross-reference telescope data with spacecraft observation and sampling to provide the ground truth, she says. She goes on to say, certainly for the time being we need spacecraft and eventually humans to go up there and explore the space around us in the hope that one day we can save ourselves from an impending impact. And if you see some of the videos that I made yesterday the day before, 
we finally did find out what Hudson Bay was made up by and why it has that very strange circular formation. Hudson Bay, as you know, is in Canada, just north of the Great Lakes, bordering Quebec and Ontario. And uh, it turned to that it was the 12,900 years ago Clovis Comet that broke them to pieces and brought the uh, Younger Dryas Ice Age and uh, caused the North American continent to first catch fires. They found layers of soot all over North America. The chemical engineers and geologists found that the soot was from the fires that had enveloped the whole of the uh, North American continent there because of these asteroid strikes, comet strikes, not just one comet, pieces of it as well. And uh, then, of course, it brought around tremendous change, earth changes and even eventually the volcanic nuclear winter and uh, seven, at least 70% ext um, extinction of uh, plant and animal life. So that was 12,900 years ago. So geologically, that's quite close to us. And that created Hudson Bay and uh, created a glacier there and enveloping the whole of the Northern Territories and Greenland. Um, so if you'd like to go and see one of those videos, you'll find it in the, just before, a couple of them before this one. Now, she says in the meantime, asteroid Bennu, formerly known as 1909RQ36, is a potentially hazardous object listed on the century scale table with the second highest cumulative rating on the Palermo Technical Impact Hazard Scale. Investigators have already warned the space agency that it could be devastating if they do not act. And accordingly, according to the study by scientist Maria Eugenia Sansatorio, asteroid Bennu may impact Earth. Sansatorio warned that a report in a report for the Solar System Journal, Icarus, that there is a good chance of the asteroid striking Earth. She told Universe Today in 2010, the total impact probability of asteroid Bennu 1999RQ36, that is, can be estimated to be 0 0.00092, approximately 1 in a 1,000 chance. But what is most surprising is that over half of this chance corresponds to the year 2,182. But NASA has a less destructive move to be for Bennu. The space agency is currently running a mission called Osiris Rex, and that spacecraft is to find out more about Bennu. The spacecraft spent two years chasing Bennu down before orbiting it for another two years and taking samples. Then, in 2023, it will blast back to Earth to allow scientists from around the world to study these samples. The mission team is particularly interested in learning the role that asteroids like Bennu, dark, primitive, and apparently car carbon-rich, is thought to be something like a small planet, may have played in creating life on Earth. It will also help scientists to refine the odds of the strike on Earth. Okay, well, I really don't care what role uh, primitive celestial rocks like this played in creating life on Earth. All I want to know is if it has a chance of striking us, what can they do to stop that? Because as things stand now, they have no uh, mechanism, no technology to stop an inbound celestial body. And this one they know may even uh, come at us. There's also other ones, not just Bennu. There's uh, Apophis that will be coming in 10 years and then again closer even still in the year 2068. That has a 1 in 150,000 chance of uh, impact and that is about a thousand some odd feet in diameter. Then you have another one that is about 400 feet in diameter. That is 214 AG5. That comes at us in the year 2040. That has a bigger probability of impact, 1 in 625. And then we said Bennu, that has about a 1,700 feet diameter and probability 1 in 1,000. And you also have 
uh, asteroid 214JO25 coming at us in about eight years, 2027. That's about uh, 1,300 feet in diameter. Probability of striking us is 1 in 8,300. As things start, stand now, currently, we don't know how these uh, probabilities will be later on. I'll leave links below for you for this on Express UK. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.